One. Peace and blessings from God our Father, His Son Jesus, and the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a beautiful Sunday morning in the city of Hopkins here at the Historic Zion Benevolent Baptist Church, and we're glad that you joined in to see this broadcast. It is the fourth Sunday in January. Y'all, we have a new president, and the church said amen. We're excited about what President Biden and even more so Vice President Kamala Harris is going to bring for the direction of our nation. We ask that you pray much for them. In that same spirit of newness, got a dear friend of mine, familiar face in a new place. My dear friend, Pastor Marlo Grayboy, is going to bring the word of God to us this morning. Pastor, introduce yourself to us. Hello, my name is Marlo Brayboy. Uh, it's good to see some of you. Uh, some of you may remember me from the Kahoot challenge that we have, and that's why I'm wearing uh, the fleece that was given to me. But uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you all for joining. Uh, I'm, I'm praying that God will deliver a word that will be transforming to your life. Uh, Pastor Train on Leadership, just thank you for the invitation, and let's see what God has to say. Let's receive the word of God together. <laughs>
enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise to be thankful unto him and to bless his holy name. Why? Because the Lord is good and his mercies are everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. You have been called to worship. <laughs>
thank God that God's got everything that you need. I'm excited, I'm elated, I am overjoyed to introduce our speaker for this morning. He is a dear friend and a brother of mine from the city of Lexington, South Carolina. He crossed the river, y'all, to come preach to us. He is none other than the expositor extraordinaire, Pastor Marlo Brayboy. He is a proud husband. His wife, Jess, is here with us on tonight, the radiant Jess Brayboy. He is a father, and he is an oracle of God's word, and he's going to preach the word of God to us on tonight. I gave him the one simple instruction that we give to every guest when they come to these sacred halls. I told him three simple words. You already know what it is. I told him, you better preach. And as the choir uh, sings, he's going to come thereafter and offer a word from the Lord.
as we begin another year. God, we know you are with us. God, we know you have already gone ahead of us. And God, I just pray you will just allow your word to land on good ground this morning and produce a harvest like never before. God, we need a word from you today. We need to be encouraged, Father. We need to be uh, 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 encouraged more with our faith. So God, today I ask that you use your son, your vessel, to preach a word that will land on the hearts of your people. Hide me behind your word. I decrease now, Father, that you may increase. Allow your Holy Spirit to speak through me to your people. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' mighty name that I pray. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, Zion Benevolent. I am grateful to be here with you all. Um, such a blessing to be a part of what you're doing here in your part of the woods. I am a country boy originally from South Carolina. I am from Turbyville, South Carolina. Most people like to say Pudding Swamp. <laughs> so I know about the country. I just haven't been there in a while. But I want to thank you all for the invitation here. Thank you, Pastor Capers, my brother in Christ, which makes you all and you all joining with us this morning, my family. And I appreciate that. I am repping your colors today, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> One that, one that on a Kahoot challenge with him one night, so some of you may see my face and be a little familiar with me. But I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, who I am. I am, of course, working at CIE with my brother. Uh, I work in an academic success center. Uh, I'm a retired military where I joined the Army and deployed twice to Iraq. And then I came back to South Carolina with my beautiful wife who's joining with us today. You know, the one thing about South Carolina that I didn't miss was the heat. I see my sister already fanning. The heat was something that I did not miss out of South Carolina because it was one of those types of heat that when you walk outside, you automatically start sweating. Yes, sir. Because we also have that thing called humidity. Yes, sir. So when the heat turns up, the water starts to run. And my, on my head, I'm the, one that got, I'm the kind of guy who got to have an extra shirt in the car. <laughs> In case you need to change later on. But this morning, I want to talk to you from the thought of when the heat gets turned up. Let's go. When the heat is turned up, what is your response? So I want to invite you all to find Daniel chapter 3, going Old Testament. Let's go. Daniel chapter 3, we're going to begin at verse number 13. Powerful passage of scripture, actually one of my favorite passages of scripture, because it tells us about these brothers, and it shows us when the heat turns up, what we need to do. Amen? Amen. This is Daniel chapter 3, beginning at verse number 13, and it reads, Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good, he says, but if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the burning furnace. Then the God will, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? He does not know what God we serve. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before this matter. They said, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But listen to verse 18. But if he does not, if he does not, these brothers said, we want you to know 
your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. The word of the Lord for the people of God. You may be seated. What's interesting about this passage is that these three men, that's not even their real names. These three men, we have to go back to the beginning of Daniel, chapter number one, where these men were taken from Israel in captivity by Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar had definitely came in and he decided to take over. He overran Israel, took people into captivity, and had some special men for a special reason. Decided to call them something different. He called them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach's name was Hananiah. Meshach's name was Mishael. And Abednego was Azariah. The thing that we have to understand that even though they were taken out of their land, even though that their names had changed, the one thing that remained the same was, was their faith in God. Regardless of the situation in which we find ourselves, we must remember that our faith must remain in God. Too many times people try to tell us who we are. They want to define us and give us a, a new descriptor. But the reality is we must remember Zion Benevolent, who we are in Christ Jesus. We can't allow the world to tell us and to determine who we are. They, they can't tell us what we are to do and how we are to act. Why? Because God's word allows us to, to learn and see who we are. So we'll know that we are a royal priesthood. We'll know that we are a chosen generation. We'll know that we are a masterpiece from the Lord himself who has sculpted us perfectly for his glory. And knowing that, knowing who we are, we can change how we see ourselves. You see, early in this chapter, in verse number one, King Nebuchadnezzar had created a gold. And we have to understand that this gold image was something that he created. He wanted somebody to worship the tree. He wanted, he wanted to be sitting on his throne, and he wanted the people to worship him. Too many times we see that in our world today where people want man to worship. Forgetting that there's a one true God who has set himself on the throne because he's the ultimately ultimate God in control. But King Nebuchadnezzar made this gold image and it was 60 feet, 60 cubit feet high and 60 cubits wide and it sat in Babylon and he summoned everybody around and he said, hey, if, you, if, it, if, it's, if it's good to you when you hear the lyre, the, the flute, the horn, the, the zither, the harp, if it's okay with you, fall down and worship this image that I have. Of course, the Jews didn't like that. Why? Because they knew the God that they served. We know today the God that we serve. So when the heat turns on, we must remember that God that we serve. We find that these brothers did not obey the king in the King, I'm not, I'm not down with it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to bow the knee. I'm not going to worship this golden image. I'm not going to worship you. Man wants us to worship them today. Mm -hmm. We see that time and time again. Man wants us to bow the knee and they want, they want us to give them glory, if you will. But the reality is there's only one person that we're supposed to serve and one person that we're supposed to raise our hands to. There's only one person that has called and is, and is due the praises that we give him. There's only one God, and that God is not man who walks on this earth today. You see, they were not afraid. You talked earlier this week about not having fear. These men were not afraid. Why were they not afraid? They knew the, they knew the, the consequences. They knew that they were going to be in a position, that they were going to be thrown into this fiery furnace. They knew what came after their disobedience, but they remained faithful to God. They knew the consequence, but they remained faithful to God. These men didn't lose heart. They didn't lose hope. They didn't lose sight of who they su they supposed to serve. No, they continued to trust in God. Amen? They continued to have faith. Matthew 10 and 28 tells us, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, 
Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both the souls and the bodies in hell. There's nothing to be afraid of. When the heat gets turned up in the kitchen, many times when I was a kid, I remember my grandmother would make cakes and stuff in the kitchen and we would go in there as a kid and my mom today would make cakes and we would go in the kitchen and we would do the one thing that we're not supposed to do, run. <laughs> So we would run in the kitchen, and we're running in the kitchen, and we're, 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 we're doing things we're not supposed to do with grandmother, and my mom would say the one thing, don't you make my cake. Oh, amen. I got a country church here tonight. The one thing that we have to remember is when that heat turns up inside of the kitchen, grandma and mama wanted us to get out of it because they needed that cake to bake the right way. When the heat was turned up for these brothers, they continued to believe in this God that they serve. You know, I grew up also playing cards and playing spades. I grew up with my family, and that, cards isn't one of those games that you have fun with, if you know what I mean. Cards is the game that is always serious. But you have that person who would come and they would talk so much noise to you that you couldn't even bend your own hand. You were so afraid, you were, I'm not quite sure if I should, if I should, I, I, I got two. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar was barking so loud to these brothers. And instead of them folding and not bending their hands, they stood firm in where God had them. Amen? Amen? These brothers stood firm on that. But how do we know? I want to go to verse number 18 real quick. He says, but even if he does not, how can a Christian say that? How can we say, but if he does not? The point that I want to make here, because I want to play it here for about the rest of the message, is that in order for you to say that, you must know him. You must believe God. You see, there's many people today, if you ask, hey, are you a Christian? Do you believe in God? They'll say, yes. I met a young lady earlier this week, and she said that to us at, at a lunch, uh, as, as I was having a lunch with another pastor. We asked her, did you believe in God? And she said, yes, I believe in God, but my family believes in God. And I listened to her wording. What's the difference? Because there is one. Mm -hmm. Believing in God is believing that he exists. A belief is, is when you don't really have an experience with the subject matter. But when you believe God, that means that you've been through some things yes, and God walked with you through them. Right. Yes, or God carried you when needed. So when you believe God, you can say, but even if now. It's interesting when you think about that. Because there's so many people today who need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's so many people today that do not believe God. They just believe in what grandma or auntie or big mama said when we were growing up. Grandfather that we're growing up. You see, we can't have a second-hand relationship with the Father. We must know him for yourself. We must know them for ourselves. Zion Benevolent, my question is, do you know him? Yes, sir. Do you believe God instead of man? Do you believe what God promises in his word instead of what man tries to mark or chirp our way? Let us believe God. So as they are denying to bow down, the king is upset. The king wants to throw them in the fire. We know the story as it continues. He turns the fire up seven times. He turns the heat up. But here's something that I want to share with you with this heat. There are many times that we're faced with something. We just went through 2020. And all of us praised Jesus on 2021. We were excited and ecstatic because we realized we were past that difficult time. 
The coronavirus showed up and it devastated our world and devastated our church. We're, we're, we're hesitant to sit by the next brother or sister. We're, we're questioning do they have the COVID or whatever the case may be. The COVID has created a fear for us. I want to remind us that even though it is real, we have to remember who even, who's more real than the COVID. You know, many times we have saw, we, we've seen, we, we, we witnessed January 6th. And listen, when the heat gets turned up, it showed, I was talking with your pastor earlier this week, and I said, pressure bus pipes. Yes, it does. When the pressure is on, when the heat is on, it busts pipes. When the heat is on, we start to act differently. We, we start to think differently. Yes. But these brothers maintained their faith because they knew God. When the heat was turned up, instead of them running the opposite way, they stood firm on the ground that they stood on. My wife and I, you don't know this, but this is timely for me. You know this. This is timely for me because I don't stand here as a person who's preaching a message to tell you that when the heat gets turned on that you should continue to stand firm. I don't tell you that as someone who's not experiencing something right now. I'm telling you that as someone who's experienced something yesterday, this morning, hours before I showed up. Because the devil has the ability to think he can get me off of my path. When the heat gets turned on, people start to think things differently. But here's what I want to share with you. I want to bring this home. I want to make this more applicable for us today. The thing that we have to remember as people of God is that we must respect people of God. Yes, We must love people as the Bible calls us to because we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, sir. But when that decides to look different mm -hmm. and people treat you different yes, sir. because they feel like they can, you must stand firm in your faith. Yes, sir. For me, we have to stand firm, my wife and I, in our faith. We're still struggling as of last night. Mm -hmm. We were church friends. The fire was turned on high. Brother, it almost broke me. It ripped my heart piece. My wife struggles. I'm struggling. We're trying to figure out, God, what is going on? How do we get here? 2020 happens. Losing a job. Some, some people lost their job. Some people lost their finances. Some people lost family members. The devastation of this heat when it turned up, it changed the way we looked at humanity. It changed the way we looked at each other. It changed the way we dealt with one another. These brothers stood firm, knowing that the fiery furnace was feet away. But how can we stand firm today? I want to tell you how. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We have to recognize who Christ do you know him? Are you willing to go through the fire and recognize that he's standing right there? Do you realize that he's led you all the way to 2021? Mm -hmm. And he has already paved the way. And yes, it's starting off crazy, but our God wasn't surprised. He didn't, he was, it, was, it didn't catch him off balance. He knew what was coming. These brothers stood firm. These brothers stood firm because God is faithful. When he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, when he says, know that I am, ego a me in the original text, I am God, when he says those things, there is something that should be stirring on the inside of you because that Holy Spirit should remind you who he is. So when the heat gets turned on, you can laugh at it. 
Because that joy that's within you allows you to stand in the fire, but you accompanied by the Son of God. Yes, sir. So as you go through the fire, it's going to get hot. But you won't come out smelling like smoke. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so trust God in the season and believe him for who he is. You know, if you don't know him this morning and you're in a place where the temperature has raised to three and four digits and it is all the way up to your eyebrows, the bills are piling up. Family is gone. Friends have turned their back on you. The job has laid you off. If that is you and you really want something to change in your life, seek Jesus. But you must know him for yourself. It's great to hear about God. I rem I'm reminded that in the Bible when Paul would say, I came to encourage you, but he also said, I also came to be encouraged. Brothers and sisters, if that is you and you need God to answer a prayer for you, right where you're seated at, he can meet you with whatever need that you have. Our God is everywhere, all at the same time, fixing every problem on earth. All we have to do is pray. All we have to do is give it to him. So if you're seated on your couch, if you're seated in the chair, you're laying in your bed, you're driving down in your car, if you're here in the sanctuary, and you need God to do something for you, I need you to stand right now. We're going to come together as one, and we're going to pray. Because the devil has played long enough. And it's time for us to take a stand. It's time for us to recognize that we have power, and it's called prayer. We have power that changes things, and it's called prayer. So I want you to pray with me. Whatever situation you have in your life, whatever's going on right now in your life, in your mind, if you're battling sickness, if you're battling uh, mental struggle, we need to get this all over to God because he's with you in that fiery furnace. Pray with me. Heavenly Father God, I trust and believe your word. We can stand here this morning to say, God, I believe you. I have faith in the promises in your son, Jesus Christ, who's resurrected, in the Holy Spirit who fills this temple. God, we need you now to intervene on our behalf, whether it's financial, whether it's sickness, whether it's of uh, uh, family issues. God, we need you to move now, God. I ask, Father, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to consume your people, the houses that they live in, Father, the jobs that they go to, their bank account, God, every situation that they are in need of, I, pr I pray, God, that you fix it now. God, we come to you because you're the only one who can. God, we come to you because you have all power in your hand. God, we know who you are. So, God, we offer it unto you. We give it to you knowing, God, that you can fix it. God, we know that you are a fixer. You are a way maker. You are a provider. God, we know who you are. So, God, today, I also pray for that brother or that sister who don't know you but they are seeking to learn more about Jesus. I pray that they were getting, getting contact with a leader here, a brother or sister here, to ask them how to lead them to God, to Jesus. Father, we need more discipleship, God, in our world. So if that's you, and you have that on your heart, reach out to Zion Benevolent, because they are hungry to give you the word of God. 
They're hungry to give you this transforming word of Christ. And I thank you now for what you're going to do with this amazing church. God bless them like never before. God, do something new in this season. God, I pray that you will just fill them with a joy like never before. A peace that surpasses all understanding. God, do something new here with Pastor Capers, the deacons, the members. God, do something here. Let them impact this area because you have them here for it this season. So God, I thank you now, and it is in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.